1 Samuel chapter number 3. And let's stand to our feet and uh, let's just stretch for a moment here as we read some verses from the Bible. Romans chapter 3. While you're standing, let me, let me just say a quick word. I think the devil is very good at trying to convince young people that you're not worthy. And you may look at those who preach in a conference like this, or you may look at your youth pastor or your pastor at home and, and think, I could never do that. I could never be any kind of a leader. I could never preach behind a pulpit. And I think the devil is very good at trying to bring thoughts in your head that, that underestimate what you could do for God. But, but young people, let me encourage you, don't underestimate the Lord. Don't underestimate the power of God and what God could do through your life. You know, if we had a category in, my, in the school that I graduated from, if we had a superlative for the least likely to succeed, I would have won. I would have won that prize. Especially if the category included preaching behind a pulpit or being any kind of a leader or doing anything for God, I would have been, number one, least likely to succeed. But you know what I have found out in my life is that when you give your life to God, God can take what you have and make it much. Amen. And if you would have told me that 39 years ago, when I sat in that other auditorium as a 17-year-old young man, that one day I'd be standing behind this pulpit, it, I'm humbled. And that I would have the privilege to oversee our Chicago bus ministry. And every week they get to go to Chicago and knock on doors and win people to Christ and invest a little bit of what I have into to young people so that they would have a chance to live for God. I wouldn't believe I wouldn't believe it. I wouldn't believe it. And you're looking at someone today who I'm 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 nothing. I, I really I'm not anything except someone who when I was your age, said, Lord, I don't have much, but if you'll take what I have, I'll give it to you. And I've watched God take what little I had to offer and multiply it. And that's exactly what God wants to do in your life. And you might be here this, this morning thinking, I just don't have that much. I'm not as smart as other people, or I just don't have the talent, I don't have the, the personality, I don't have what other people have. Look, God just wants what you have. Amen. And if you'll give God what you have, God will take it and he'll make it much. And that's what the Lord wants to do. You know, Paul said, I have no greater joy than to, to know my children walk in truth. You know, the great joy of the ministry is, is investing in people. And watching other people have their life changed because of a small part that you got to have. And that's why we love the ministry. That's why we love serving God. Because of the joy that it brings our life to see others impacted by what we're able to do for them. 1 Samuel chapter 3 and the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place. And his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And ere or before the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord. Where the ark of the God ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep, that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I, for thou callest me. And he said, I called not, lie down again, and he went and lay down. And the Lord called yet again, Samuel. 
And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be, if he shall call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place, and the Lord came and stood, and called, as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. Mash you bow your head and close your eyes, and let's go to the Lord and pray together. Father, I do pray that you would sanctify these next few moments. I pray that every young person in this room would be attentive, not just to my words, but to the Holy Spirit of God who lives inside every Christian in this room. Amen. And I pray that you'd use your word to speak to our hearts, convict us, Change us, inspire us, make us what we ought to be, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I love our theme for this year, boldly go. <clears throat> the word bold means to be brave, confident, courageous, fearless, willing to take risks. The opposite of the word bold would mean to be afraid, to be timid. To be a coward. And you know, young people, God wants us as Christians to be bold. Amen. He wants us to have the boldness of God in our life. He wants us to be brave. He wants us to have confidence, to be courageous, to be fearless. The Bible says in Proverbs 28.1, The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. But you know, the honest truth is, if we're, if we're honest with ourselves, we would admit that sometimes we lack that boldness. We lack courage. We're not fearless. Sometimes we are afraid. We're afraid to admit that we're a Christian. Sometimes we're afraid to admit that we love the Lord. Sometimes we're afraid to carry our Bibles in public. Sometimes we're afraid to share our testimony or to tell somebody about Jesus. Amen. I remember as a seventh grader, we were, I went to public school and we were in our gym class and I was a Christian. Grew up in a Christian home and I remember at gym class, the, some of the boys were talking about being born again. And one of the boys said to me, said, hey, John, you, you know a little bit about that. Tell, tell Vinny. Vinny was a friend of mine. said, tell Vinny. Vinny was asking about being born again. And, and boy, I, I lacked the confidence. And, and boy, I lacked the boldness. And I was fearful. And, and I'm, a, I'm embarrassed to, to, to share that because I should have taken opportunity to share my faith, but I was too timid and I was too afraid. I didn't have the boldness that I needed. Sometimes we lack boldness for Christ because we are ashamed. We don't want to identify with Christ. We don't want to identify with the Bible. We don't want to identify with this crowd. Now, as long as we're in this crowd, we, we're okay. But as soon as we step out of this setting right here, we don't want to identify with those who love the Lord. Why? Because we're ashamed. We're ashamed of what we believe, and we're ashamed to, to admit who we are. I want you to take your Bibles and turn to Philippians, if you would. Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1, quickly. And I want you to read with me out loud this verse. Philippians chapter 1. Quickly, find it in your Bible. Philippians chapter 1. 
I want you to read out loud with me verse number 20. If you found it, say amen. Amen. Oh good, both of you found it already. Philippians chapter 1, verse number 20. If you found it, read it out loud with me. Ready? According to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. You know, God wants us not to be ashamed. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. And read with me this verse here. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 12. Ready? For the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed, For I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Let me ask you a question this morning. Why are you ashamed? Don't you know who you believe? Don't you know, don't you realize this morning, young people, that we are on the winning side? Don't you realize that when life is over, and by the way, life is short, but when it's all over, you're going to, to, to I want to identify with the Christ who died for you. Why don't we ad- identify with him today? Why don't we identify with him now? Because we struggle with being ashamed. I heard this just the other day. The reason we lack boldness it's because we are more concerned with our image than his image. Let me say that again. The reason we lack boldness is because we're more concerned about our image than his image. God, help me not to be ashamed of you. God, help me to have the courage and the boldness to identify with who you are. Samuel was a bold, unashamed young man, and God used him in a mighty way. He was a prophet. He was a judge. He was a man who anointed David to be the king of Israel. In Hebrews chapter 11, we find that he was a great hero of the faith. There's three areas of Samuel's life where he was not ashamed, and we'll go through these quickly. Number one, I want you to notice that he was not ashamed to surrender. He was not ashamed to surrender. The Bible says that Samuel was a child. Most people think he was about 12 years old. How many of you are about 12 years old? Would you raise your hand? Many of you in this room this morning. Samuel was just a child. We find four different times God calling Samuel. Three times, Samuel thought it was Eli. Three times, he runs to Eli and says, Eli, here I am. Eli was the priest. He says, here I am, Eli. Is there something you need? And and what I love about Samuel was his spirit of, 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 that, that when he heard his name called, thinking that Eli had called his name, he ran to him. Because he was not ashamed to surrender. He was not ashamed to surrender his life and and find out what was needed to be done. Three times he runs to Eli. Eli realizes that, that God was the one that was speaking. He told Samuel, go back to bed and if you hear your name again, then reply to the Lord. And so the fourth time it was God called again, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel's response was, here I am, Lord. Here I am. I want to be your servant. And Samuel was not ashamed to surrender. Let me ask you a question. Will you have the boldness to say, here I am? If God speaks to you this week, will you have the boldness not to worry about what your friends think? Not to worry about what your siblings think? Not to worry about what your, what your family might say, what anybody in this room might say. Will you have the boldness and not be ashamed to surrender and say, here I am, Lord. I surrender my will. 
I surrender my music. I surrender my friends. I surrender my dreams. I surrender what I want, and I'll do what you want with my life. Too often God is speaking, but the noise is so loud we can't hear. Young people, God doesn't always yell or scream to get our attention. In 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 12, and after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. Psalm 46, 10 says, be still and know that I am God. And what's sad is that God is speaking, but how many young people are listening? And the reason many of you, some of you have a hard time listening is because there's so much noise. You're listening to your friends and not listening to God. You're listening to your, to your cell phone and not listening to God. And you've got so much noise in your life that, you're, that you have a hard time being still and listening. To the voice of God. Not ashamed to surrender. Secondly, I notice about Samuel is that he was not ashamed to stand. Not ashamed to surrender, not ashamed to stand. Hannah prayed for many years that, she, that God would give her a son. And she made a promise that if God gave her a son, she'd give him back to the Lord. Samuel went to live with the, with the high priest, Eli, who had two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, and they were very wicked and very perverted. But I want you to notice that Samuel was not influenced by their bad be behavior. He stood for what was right. It had been so easy for Samuel to be influenced by, the, by, the, by the, the bad behavior of these boys who were the, the, the pastor's sons, the preacher's sons. But Samuel was a young man who quickly figured that out and said, you know what, I'm going to stand for right. I'm going to do the right thing. I'm not going to be ashamed. In Luke chapter 17, it tells a story about Jesus healing ten lepers. And the Bible says that one of, the, of those that got healed came back and said, thank you to the Lord. Just one. And Jesus says, where are the nine? I healed ten. Ten had this awful, despicable disease called leprosy, and, and I healed all ten, but only one came back and said, thank you, and Jesus says, where are the nine? I don't know about you young people, but I want to be the one. I want to be the one that goes back and says, thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross for my sin. Thank you for what you've done in my life. I want to be the one. And young people, why don't you say today that I'm going to be the one that has gratitude. I'm going to be the one to stand for right. I'm going to be the one. It doesn't matter what my friends are doing. It doesn't matter where they're going or what they're watching or their behavior. I'm going to be the one that does the right thing. You see, not everybody will have a heart for the Lord. Not everybody will live for God. Not everybody has the courage to stand. But let me, let me challenge you this morning. Don't be ashamed to say, I love Jesus. Don't be ashamed to carry your Bible. Don't be ashamed to pass out tracts and let people know that you're a Christian. Don't be ashamed to look and dress and act like a Christian. Be the one. Be the one. It says, I want to I show my gratitude to my Savior and to my Lord for what he's done in my life. And I'm not going to be ashamed to stand for God. I'm not going to be ashamed to stand for the Lord. The third thing I want you to notice is not only was Samuel not ashamed to surrender, not ashamed to stand but he was not ashamed to serve. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 18, the Bible says, But Samuel ministered before the Lord, being a child. Again, in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord. 
Jesus only had one prayer request in the Bible. And that prayer request was this, Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. And you know why that was his prayer request? Because the verse before that says, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. As Brother Brown and Brother Ross preached last night, I couldn't help but think about their testimony and how both of them, in their youth, surrendered to the Lord and have been able to give so much of their life to serve. I know men who wasted a lot of their years some because they didn't get saved until they were older in, in life. Some because they were backslidden and, and, and did their own thing until they kind of figured things out and said, you know what, now it's time to, to get right with the Lord and, and now it's time to make a change. But then so much of their life has been wasted. Can I tell you this morning that I am so glad that I was only 17 years old when I surrendered my life to to preach the gospel. Because it has allowed me for the last 39 years of my life to serve the Lord. And I want to serve the Lord until Jesus comes. And I'm not ashamed to serve. I was 17 years old when I first visited a Chicago bus for help. I'd never been to a big city like Chicago before. And I saw some things that day that I'd never seen in my life. I'd never seen gangs. I'd never seen drug deals. I'd never seen and heard some of the behavior of what was happening in the city. And, and for several hours as we visited on that bus route, I, I really thought that we were wasting our time. I thought there's no way that young people who live in such a wicked place could ever turn out for the Lord. Until about 4 o'clock that afternoon, I met two teenage girls who were different than everyone else that I'd seen that day. These young ladies had skirts on. These young ladies were carrying their New Testament because they had just come back from soul winning with the lady bus workers that day. And I walked out of that apartment and... I realized something. I realized two things. One, I realized this. I realized that young people can stand for God regardless of their circumstances. And if I, if I took you to where they lived and, 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 and the, the, the gangs and, the, and just, a, just a wicked behavior that took place in their neighborhood, but yet here was two young ladies who stood for God. Their, her, their parents didn't go to church. Their parents were divorced and, and mom and dad didn't go to church. Mom lived on one side of the street. Dad lived across the street. And, 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 and they didn't live together. And they didn't live for the Lord. But here was two young ladies who were living for God. And I said to myself, the devil lied to me. Because young people can live for God. But then also realize this. Those young people didn't wake up one day and, and say, you know what? I think I want to go to church. And they didn't go out on the street and start waving down a bus to ride to, to church. Somebody knocked on their door. Somebody took the Bible and, and showed them how to be saved. Somebody taught them Sunday school. Somebody prayed for them. Somebody loved them. Somebody drove their bus. Somebody made a difference in their life. Listen, listen, look at me. And as a 17-year-old young man, I made a decision. And that decision was this. I'm not going to be ashamed to serve the Lord. I'm not going to be ashamed to serve God. And if God would let me, I want to do for them. I want to do for some other young people that live on those streets what somebody did for them. And I made a decision that if God would let me, I want to make a difference Amen. in somebody's life. Amen. I'm not going to be ashamed to serve. 
We need some young people today who would stand up for Jesus. And as Brother DeMoville said a little while ago, commit to the Lord. To have boldness, to be fearless, to not be ashamed of who we are in Christ. To identify with the Lord and identify with the Word of God and say to the whole world, I'm a Christian and I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed to surrender. I'm not ashamed to stand. And I'm not ashamed to serve. And that would be the best decision you could make. Is to say, Lord, I'm not ashamed. I'm so glad that as Jesus died on the cross, suffering and pain and shedding his blood for you and for me, for my sin and for your sin, that he wasn't ashamed. He wasn't ashamed of me. He should have been. He wasn't ashamed of you. So why should I be ashamed of him? Would you bow your head? Would you close your eyes? Father, I pray that you'd help us, Lord, to be committed to make a decision not to be ashamed. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. How many of you would would say, my prayer this morning is that God would help me not be ashamed to surrender, not be ashamed to stand, not be ashamed to serve, God spoke to your heart. Would you just slip up your hand? Would you raise your hand all over the room? That's it. That's it. That's it. Who else? Who else? Amen. Raise your hand. Way up high. Way up high. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. God spoke to your heart. Raise your hand. Way up high. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Don't worry about who's next to you. Don't worry about what people think. Don't worry worry about what people say. Lord, you see the hands that are raised. And God, I pray that you would help every young person to follow through. To have the boldness and the courage to stand, to surrender, to serve. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.